President Obama called me and notified me that he had approved the Medal of Honor for myself from actions from October 25th, 2007 in the Korngal Valley. I joined the Army. At the time, I was working at Subway, sandwich artist. Didn't really have a whole lot going on. I was still in school. 9-11 happened. There's a war that is happening around us, Afghanistan, Iraq. I'm 17 years old. I'm about to be 18 years old. I'm an able-bodied male. I'm an American. When I first deployed, I was excited. I was ready. Well, to do this, I got my gun. I jumped out of the planes. We're going to war. This is what I came here to do. Let's do this. I could, I could see that. You know, at the start, you see that spark in, in like the new guys. Like they got it. Like here we go. You know, when I got there, um, I knew that I had a very, very aggressive bunch uh, from Iraq and from uh, Afghanistan the previous time. Their reputation preceded them. A very aggressive battle company is the one that will go out there and they'll get the job done no matter what the stakes. Just give us intent and we're going to knock it out. The Rock Avalanche, we went up to the Talisar and Abascar to be in basically blocking positions to prevent the enemy from coming from the Korngal Valley where they all freaking were. So the Chosen Company could check out some villages that uh, we had never been to. And yeah, I knew there was bad guys there. I knew they were going to come at us. We knew that they were, they were coming at us because they were down in Landigal. OP Restrepo was seeing them down in Landigal. I knew they were coming the whole time. I think it was uh, the second day. That's when we started getting the, the intelligence that they were, you know, we could hear them whispering. They were so close to us, they were whispering on their ICOMs, otherwise it would give away their position. And then we ended up getting attacked on the third afternoon. I've got guns coming in on 5-1. I've got guns coming in on 4-0 as well. Break. We were close. I was sitting there with Brennan because we all had our own positions. We start hearing the stuff come in over the radio and it's just blowing our minds. Hey, these, these guys come up on a steep hill and uh, and are able to get on Sarn Rice and uh, Sarn Rugel and uh, Sarn Vandenberg. WIAs, hearing that someone's not answering the radio, hearing that they can't get to someone else. We push up the Abascar, we're moving south down the Abascar, but they stop us, we set in, helicopters start coming into the valley. And they're holding the reins and we can't go and we're not gonna go and we're just gonna sit there and get pissed and hate everyone and just marinate in our hate and not be able to do anything, but you still gotta, you're still pulling security, you're still sitting there, you gotta sit there calmly, you not, gotta not let it show. You gotta keep a tight lip, just, you know, say your prayers for the guys and hope that it's not as bad as it sounded. I believe that they will be moving from the Landigal Spur down into the Landigal Draw towards the village of Landigal. I made the decision, being the commander on the ground, that I wanted to go into Landigal to get our damn weapons back and show these people that we're not going to give up. We don't leave anything behind. I don't want them to have a war trophy. I don't want them walking around in some video showing off Sergeant uh, Rice's M14, Sergeant Larry Rugel's, you know, backpack with his name on it. 
Hell no, I'm getting that stuff. That's that's not theirs, that's mine. And boys dug down deep, walked down to Landigal, put first and third platoons up on Honcho Hill and the spur there, that was the Gadigal spur. So they were on the south side. I moved the headquarters element so we were on the north side. I got two Predators flying overhead. I've got a B-1 bomber flying overhead, and I got two H-64s flying overhead. So while I got all these assets, I tell 1st Platoon to go ahead and start moving down from, from Honcho Hill. We didn't move that far. We were, I would, yeah, see, I try to forget a lot of this. It benefits me in the long run, and kind of coming back and doing all these things, talking about it, yeah. wrenches the gut. We didn't move that far. I don't know how far we really moved in the end, maybe 100 meters, 50 meters, I don't know. And as they moved down, the enemy puts together probably the most audacious fight that I've ever seen or, or heard of. They, they set up a good ambush. They set up a good ambush. They did what we would have done. That's a good ambush, the L-shaped ambush. It, it's logistically pretty darn efficient. Something like 30 or 40 RPGs are shot at uh, first platoon's lead squad, separating them from the rest of the platoon. Bullets, a wall of bullets at everyone at the same time with one crack and then a million other cracks afterwards with, you know, it's not so much that it's a tracer and then a round and then a tracer, it's probably a tracer and like four rounds and a tracer and it is just filled with tracers everywhere. Shoot. Everybody in that squad at least once, either in the IBA or um, in the helmet or, you know, in their leg or something like that. I got hit, like, down in the, in the plate. I got hit in the plate like, a, like someone pushed me more. It, it didn't even feel like I got hit down here. It felt like someone just kind of, like, knocked me. And, but right almost simultaneously when that happened, I'm looking at Sergeant Gallardo and I watched his head kind of do one of those, I don't know, an abnormal twitch. People don't twitch their head, not at a time like this. And his head knocked, and then he started kind of falling down. I, was, I, th I thought he got shot in the head. He, he got shot in the helmet, but I thought, you know, who knows what that is. I thought he got shot in the head. And all the while, it's pitch black, and the helicopters can't see anything. They can't engage because they don't know who's who. Airplanes can't tell who's who. Predators can't tell who's who. Nobody knows what the hell's going on. We're going to bring the team together, teams together. We're going to shoot. We're shooting. We're going to throw grenades. We're going to move. We're throwing grenades. We're moving. We're going to shoot. We're going to throw grenades. We're going to move. We're going to shoot. We're going to find someone. Got Ekrod. Find next person. And they notice that Sergeant Brennan's gone. I mean, Sergeant Brennan's just missing. He calls up. Gallardo tells Lieutenant Wynn, hey, we, we're missing Brennan. Uh, we don't know where he's at. Junta goes running off into the dark. And I was running. It was like this, this eerie, empty, open, f flat space for the most part that it that I came out on and kept on running. And I saw three guys, and there was two guys carrying one guy, and the one had his arms, and the other had his legs. I only knew one of them, and it was wasn't the one that I wanted to know. It was Brennan, and he was the one being carried away. So just fucking running and shooting, running and shooting, trying to close the gap with him. I shot, I shot at both of them. I, I killed one, I guess, you know, at the end. But the other one, I shot the shit out of. I tried to, but didn't see him. And by by the time I, my magazine was already empty, I was at Brennan. It's already at Brennan. So just. Grab Brennan. I, I yelled for Sergeant Gallardo that God, they're, they're fucking taking him. Like, what the fuck? Three times, okay. Yeah. June ends up killing two guys and wounds one other and repatriates and gets his buddy Sergeant Brennan back. Shot eight times and the guy's still breathing. They bring them back, helicopters come in, and they're doing great stuff, uh, you know, using the baskets to, to bring them up and everything like that. See him off, and then we leave. 
we had to divvy up the equipment, so there's people carrying multiple weapons, people carrying extra body armor. I could fill the weight of carry back Brennan's body armor. I could just fill it in my in my ruck. Just I only got back and Captain Kearney called us together and told us that Brennan had died and Mendoza had died. That was the first time like we heard that. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. Didn't see that one coming. Enduring Freedom, while assigned as a squad leader in Battle Company, 2nd Battalion, 503rd Infantry. His unwavering courage, aggressiveness, tactical skills, and leadership under extreme enemy fire were decisive in his platoon achieving fire superiority and defeating an enemy near ambush. Staff Sergeant Gallardo's performance of duty in a combat zone. Private First Class's Cortez's performance. Specials Rogers' performance. Sergeant Benjamin Roberson for wounds received in action. Sergeant Andrew Regal. Staff Sergeant McDonough's unwavering courage, aggressiveness, and leadership. Reflects great credit upon himself, the Rock Battalion, the Bayonet Brigade Combat Team, Combined Joint Task Force 82, and the United States Army. What went through your head when you heard? You were gonna be up for a Medal of Honor. Fuck you. I said, that's not something, it sounds great in theory. It sounds really awesome in theory, but it's not, I mean, what's it worth? Brennan, Mendoza, no. Is it worth, no. I don't know what it's worth. It's worth a lot. I don't want to like I, I don't want to downplay it at all. It is the Medal of Honor is, is the greatest given to just some real tough guys out there doing shit for other people that isn't necessary, but they do it, and that's not me. I didn't do shit. I did what I did because, in the scheme of this whole painting the picture of that ambush, that was just my brushstroke. It's not above and beyond. That picture wouldn't have been complete without that brush stroke, and it was my brush stroke to take. I didn't take the biggest brush stroke, and it wasn't the most important brush stroke. It was just one that completed the picture. This is the nation's highest honor. Awesome. And it's given to me, okay, but just as much as me, every single person that I've been with deserves to wear it, deserves to they are just as much of me as I am. Out of all these people that I've been with, out of two combat tours, I'm sitting here in the studio with you right now, and Battle Company, second to the 503rd, the 173rd is out there doing it again, just being brave. My name in lights doesn't look that good, but if I can bring everyone else's name with me, then cool. I think that looks pretty good with everyone else's name there.